Welcome to Ring Theory. I have found that it is the small, everyday deed of ordinary folks that keep the darkness at bay. Small acts of kindness and love. Gandalf, J.R.R. Tolkien, The Hobbit. In this series of videos, I'll be taking inspiration from this quote and focusing in on the unsung heroes of Middle-earth. In today's episode, I'll be looking at Farmer Maggot. Farmer Maggot was a hobbit farmer who lived at a house called Bamfurlong. This was in the Marish, a boggy region of the Shire's East Farthing, which is why most tended to live in houses rather than hobbit holes. As it was near the borders of the Shire, Farmer Maggot had to be more expectant of trouble than most hobbits, and for protection he kept three huge dogs called Grip, Fang and Wolf. He lived with his wife, Mrs. Maggot, along with three daughters and several sons. His mushrooms were renowned to be of top quality, along with turnips and other vegetables he grew on his land. Frodo, in his youth, made a habit of stealing these mushrooms. On one occasion, Farmer Maggot actually caught him, beat him and threatened to let his dogs eat him if he tried to steal from him again. His dogs then chased Frodo all the way to Buckleberry Ferry. From then on, Frodo was terrified of him and certainly never tried to steal from him again. Merry and Pippin, on the other hand, were actually very good friends with the domineering farmer. He is reduced to a very small part in the films, having a brief encounter with the Ringwraith before chasing all four hobbits out of his field. That small confrontation with the Ringwraith is, in my opinion, one of the greatest misrepresentations of an encounter in all of fiction. In the film, the Ringwraith hisses at him, Shire, Baggins. Farmer Maggot then quivers, recoils, and says, There ain't no Baggins round here, they're up in Hobbiton, that way. Even pointing the Ringwraith in the right direction. This is a gross misrepresentation of what happened. Peter Jackson definitely done the farmer dirty here. In the books, when questioned by the Ringwraith, Farmer Maggot does not falter or back down in any way. He tells him firmly that there are no Bagginses here and that he should go back to Hobbiton. Not in a way to help, but essentially telling him to get off his land. The Ringwraith then tells him that Baggins has left and would not come back to Hobbiton. But if he informed him the next time Baggins came, he would return with gold. Farmer Maggot's reply is, no you won't. You'll go back where you belong, double quick. I give you one minute before I call my dogs. Bear in mind, great warriors of men run in fright and hide from ringwraiths. Their voices are said to bring an aura of dread and terror to the very hearts of mortal beings. Farmer Maggot openly admits that this black rider gave him a chill, but he fought this and threatened to call his dogs. He then jumped out of the way as the Ringwraith hissed and his horse made a movement towards him. After calling his dogs, the Black Rider then turned and rode away. Imagine this from the Black Rider's point of view. He has a ring of power. He has cheated death. He inspires fear from even powerful beings like Gandalf. But this creature, who would appear almost childlike in his eyes, essentially just tells him to go away and calls his dogs. Of course, it would have drew unnecessary attention for the Ringwraith to kill Farmer Maggot, but I like to imagine that the reason he didn't was because he was so stunned by Farmer Maggot's response, and he maybe even recalled the story to the other Ringwraiths later. This alone is enough for Farmer Maggot to appear in this list of videos, but there's more. Later on that same day, already feeling understandably cautious, he invited Frodo, Sam and Pippin into his land. Not initially, he was ready to send out his dogs again until he saw his old friend Pippin and recognised Frodo. Afterwards, Mrs Maggot, who deserves an honourable mention herself, serves them mugs of beer whilst Farmer Maggot relays what happened earlier with the Black Rider. He then offers them dinner, which Frodo refuses as they have to get going, but he does this despite Frodo repeatedly stealing from him in his youth, showing that the farmer doesn't hold a grudge. He goes the extra mile to help the hobbits, and he insists on taking them by wagon to the ferry. 
Ironically, the very same ferry that Frodo was chased by Farmer Maggot's dogs to all those years earlier. This shows great bravery, knowing that there were ringwraiths and queer folk in the Shire still out on the roads. To round off his impact on the story, once he drops them off, he hands Frodo a gift prepared by Mrs. Maggot, a basket of the same mushrooms Frodo had previously stole from them. Who knows what would have happened if this resolute farmer hadn't taken the hobbits to the ferry or sent the Black Rider on his way. A more selfish, self-preserving hobbit, for which there are many, may have given up Frodo to the Black Riders for some gold and the ring wouldn't even have made it out of the Shire. We all have a lot to thank Farmer Maggot for. He is the epitome of small acts of kindness keeping evil at bay and well deserves his nomination as an unsung hero of Middle-earth. As a last thought on this farmer, Tom Bombadil says of him, there's earth under his old feet and clay on his fingers, wisdom in his bones and both his eyes are open. Coming from someone of Tom Bombadil's power, this is a huge compliment. Hobbits are notoriously incurious and private creatures, so for him to be described by Tom to have both his eyes open and wisdom in his bones is a huge compliment. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel I'll be focusing on anything and everything to do with The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien lore from the books, the original trilogy and the new TV show. If you liked the video and want to hear more, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button below.